Hi everyone, thank you for taking the time to join me today. I hope wherever you are in the world that you and your families are safe and well. It's a privilege to have been asked to speak to you today about MSDI and the exciting work the UKHO have been doing to support countries in unlocking the potential of the blue economy using marine geospatial data. But what is MSDI? Why do we need it? And how can it be implemented to support a thriving blue economy? MSDI stands for Marine Spatial Data Infrastructure and is the marine component of an SDI, or Spatial Data Infrastructure. There are numerous definitions and variations on what an SDI and therefore MSDI are, but simply put, it's a framework of suggested best practice and guidance for the management of geospatial data, underpinned by some key principles supporting interoperability, integration, institutional collaboration and coordination. A spatial data infrastructure is scalable, meaning it can operate at an organisational, national or even international level. In all cases, the key principles of good data management apply. These principles seek to make geospatial data discoverable, accessible and reusable, so that all users can access the data they require whenever, wherever and however they need it. The UKHO are currently transitioning to an MSDI operating model by adopting the UN GGIM Integrated Geospatial Information Framework, or IGIF. This framework proposes nine specific pathways, which build on other models of MSDI that focus primarily on technology, standards, data and people. UN GGIM advocate developing each of the nine pathways in unison to ensure a stable foundation on which to build and evolve. But what does MSDI mean to the UKHO? The digital revolution that has unfolded in recent years has seen one of the most radical transformations in the depth and breadth of the marine geospatial data now at our disposal. We've seen a transformation in the way it has been gathered, giving unprecedented scale and range. Moreover, we've seen new capabilities emerge as we immerse ourselves in this data. The possibilities of what can be achieved are extraordinary. With this in mind, the UKHO believes in making data findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable to ensure where permissible it is available to anyone who needs it. We also believe that MSDI is not an end state. It's not something which can be easily implemented using technology alone, but rather MSDI is a constantly evolving ecosystem of the nine pathways, including governance, data and partnerships, and which can only be achieved when each is developed equally and iteratively. But how can MSDI and geospatial data support disaster resilience and the blue economy and government infrastructures of the countries around the world? Over the last 70 years, over 500 natural disasters have hit small states with developing economies worldwide. Of these, over 300 were in the Caribbean, home to a predominant share of small island states. The Caribbean region is particularly at risk from natural weather events, such as hurricanes, which typically form over the Atlantic, some as far away as the west coast of Africa. 99% of these storms travel east to west across the Atlantic, and when combined with the warm waters and humid climate of the Caribbean summer months, are fuelled further. The resulting winds and subsequent waves and flooding can be devastating to the coastal communities of these low-lying small island states. Moreover, the livelihoods of more than 100 million people who live on or near the coast are supported by the Caribbean Sea's ocean economy through tourism, fisheries and aquaculture. And globally, over 3 billion people worldwide rely upon food from the ocean as their primary source of protein. However, for far too long, there has been little thought given to the ensuring that the growth is sustainable, balanced or fair. As much as 40% of the world's oceans are heavily affected by human activities, including pollution, depleted fisheries and degraded coastal habitats. At the UKHO, we hold terabytes of data, which include comprehensive bathymetric data covering the UK, the British Overseas Territories, countries for which we are the primary charting authority and Commonwealth nations. We have 7.5 million profiles on temperature and salinity, tens of thousands of marine mammal observations and seabed grab samples, as well as many other data sets collected by us and by our partner organisations. There's great potential for all of this data to play a key role in supporting sustainable economic growth and helping coastal states to mitigate the risks associated with the ever increasing number of natural events. As technology improves our knowledge of the deeper offshore waters and our capacity to access them, a number of new opportunities have also emerged and are gradually being realised. These include the current interest in deep seabed minerals, ocean energy production and marine genetic resources with medical, pharmaceutical and industrial benefits. 
We can also combine the same data with other environmental data sets to support the development of habitat maps, to monitor the impact of warming oceans on key marine environments and support conservation efforts. This is especially critical for coral reef systems, which are declining at an annual rate of 1-2% to due to these pressures. Another amazing example of the capabilities we see with marine geospatial data is how satellite data is used to track environmental change. We see this in the development of a new method to monitor changes to mangroves, a tree species found in coastal areas that has significant capacity for absorbing greenhouse gases, but also plays a crucial role in mitigating the impact of tidal surges resulting from extreme weather events, by providing a natural barrier. The more we understand about the importance of coastal wetlands as carbon sinks and as natural sea defences, the more important it is we can map, monitor and manage these resources. As you can see, opportunities to utilise marine geospatial data to mitigate the risk of natural disasters and to support and conserve the blue economy are endless. However, to ensure developing island nations, such as the British Overseas Territories and the Caribbean, are able to maximise the value of the geospatial data which they hold, and for which the UKHO collects on their behalf, it is imperative this data is discoverable, accessible and reusable to those who need it. As we continue our transition to an MSDI operating model, UKHO have identified opportunities to further embody the principles of an MSDI by not only making the data available, more discoverable, accessible and reusable, but through other professional services such as training and capability building, infrastructure and governance and consultancy, and bathymetric survey specification and fulfilment. These UKHO professional services are all rooted in the principles of MSDI and underpinned by the UN GGIM nine pathways. They can and have been used to help overseas territories and small island developing nations to implement the foundations of their own marine spatial data infrastructures, exposing them to opportunities for deriving greater value from the marine geospatial data and in turn stimulating their blue economies. At the UKHO, aligned with our role within the UK government, a significant portion of our thinking is dedicated to how we can expand the frontiers of marine geospatial data in order to help promote safe, secure and prosperous oceans, including untapped blue economic opportunities. For example, through the UK Government's Overseas Territory Seabed Mapping Programme, we're working with other partner organisations to help 14 overseas territories to support shipping and to protect their marine environments. The provision of data through programmes such as the Overseas Territory Seabed Mapping Programme has long been a challenge. Limitations in the data management capability and poor internet connectivity of developing nations coupled with large volumes of data, have historically meant there has been no alternative but to fly the data out on hard drives. This is neither sustainable nor environmentally friendly, and clearly does not aid in making data either discoverable or accessible to the many stakeholders for whom it might support, and from which greater value might be realised. In attempting to solve this problem, we have worked extensively with the Government of Anguilla to develop the Anguilla Data Hub, a web-based portal hosted in the cloud to provide a user interface to an Anguilla marine spatial data infrastructure. Based on the UKHO's own Admiralty Marine Data Portal and built to empower the government in decision making for a better understanding of their seabed, it combines bathymetry collected under the Overseas Territory Seabed Mapping Programme with additional and complementary data such as AIS traffic, wrecks and obstructions, maritime limits, seabed composition data and more. These data sets have the potential to be incredibly powerful for example, with this new portal, Anguillan stakeholders could plan port developments with far greater knowledge of seabed and ocean conditions, enabling larger cruise ships to dock and in doing so, provide a significant boom to their tourism industry, an industry that underpins the local economy. Marine archaeologists could utilise a combination of data such as bathymetry, wrecks and obstructions, seabed composition and tidal information when conducting seabed archaeological investigations in sites for potential renewable energy sources, such as wind farms. Coastal mangrove forest coverage could be monitored using the UKHO satellite-derived global mangrove data set and their health and carbon sequestration properties modelled to inform trading activities within the carbon offset market. Through machine and human analysis of satellite imagery, coastal infrastructure development could be supported by identifying areas which are most at risk of erosion and therefore help in identifying suitable locations for new infrastructure such as hotels or coastal communities. Furthermore, by combining this data with tidal and bathymetric data, 
the impact on coastal communities and infrastructure from storm surge and other extreme weather events could be predicted. Informed decisions can then be made on how to protect communities in those locations by fully assessing the risks and the mitigation options. The list of opportunities is endless. Our team work closely with our partners in Anguilla, from the initial data capture and processing through to development of a proof of concept data portal, associated data services and a subsequent live service, as well as training users to build up long-lasting, future-facing capabilities. These results are encouraging and it's amazing to see the change that's happening, but despite this, there is still a long way to go, with many coastal states subject to massive challenges. At the UKHO, we take our role in supporting developing island nations seriously. MSDI is a complex framework which involves data capture, mapping, standards, policy, governance and training. But with access to high quality, trusted marine geospatial data, overseas territories and their governments, scientists, academics and business leaders will be equipped to make better collective decisions about how to protect their oceans and ensure a sustainable and prosperous future for the blue economy. Thank you for listening.